In January, I made a video called Achieving Realism in 12 Minutes, showing you how I put together scenes quickly in Blender. A lot of people ask me to make a follow up to that video, going into more detail about my process. I also get loads of people asking me to make video tutorials on making a beer in Blender. So here it is. This should be a fairly easy video for you to follow, as long as you understand the basic features of Blender. So first things first, we're going to need some basic lighting. I got rid of that default cube and the light from the scene. And I use this really handy little add-on called Easy HDRI. That allows me to quickly load in HDR images from my library. If you haven't used HDRs before, they give you nice realistic looking lighting, reflections and even a background with basically no extra work. There's even a HDR image from inside the Blender Institute complete with Suzanne Monkeyhead. I went for this outdoor balcony scene, I'll leave a link to this in the description below. I dragged a pint glass reference image into Blender from Windows and I just pushed it back slightly on the Y axis to move it out of the way. Next I used the ruler tool to make sure it was all built to the correct real world scale. It's really important for photorealism to make sure all your assets are not just the right proportion but the right real world scale. To make the pint glass I just added a cylinder, moved it into the correct shape in edit mode. For the bulge part that comes out the side of the glass I made a loop cut with Ctrl R and I scaled it out a little bit and then I used Ctrl and B to bevel it into a nice curve. Right click on the mesh in object mode, enable shade smoothing and then in the normals property panel enable auto smooth and that'll fix all those bad shading issues. Finally I just selected the bottom face and I used Ctrl B again to add a little bevel to the bottom of the glass. Select that top face, delete it, we don't need it. To add some thickness to our glass, we're just going to add a solidify modifier, give it 1 to 3 millimeters of thickness, hit apply. Drinking glasses are a little bit thicker at the bottom so they don't smash when you put them down. That's really easy to do in Blender. What we're going to do is go into edit mode, select the bottom face inside the glass, go into wireframe view and the side view, turn on proportional editing either by clicking the little circle icon at the top or just pressing O on the keyboard and we can grab that face and move it around. However, you can see that we're grabbing the whole mesh at the moment and we only want to move the faces that are inside the glass. Luckily, the proportional editing has this option called connected only that's going to fix that problem. So now we can grab that bottom face, press Z and we can just move it up slightly on the Z axis and that's going to give us that little bit of thickness at the bottom of the glass. Add a subdivision surface modifier and at the top of the outside of the glass Use Ctrl R just to add a loop cut. We're going to make that little lip that's on the top of drinking glasses. Hold down Alt in face select mode and select the top ring of faces that go around the top of the glass. Press Alt and E and extrude faces along normals and that'll pull that lip out a little bit. Then just use Ctrl and R and add another loop cut right near the bottom of that lip and that'll add a little bit of support to the edge. Make sure you apply the subdivision surface modifier and our glass is now done. It's time to move on to the liquid. To create the liquid, hit the glass again, go back into edit mode and select the bottom face inside the glass. Press Ctrl and P a couple of times to grow the selection up the side of the glass. Keep going until it gets to the height you want the liquid to be. Press Ctrl and D to duplicate those faces. Right click to confirm the position and then press P separate by selection. What we've just done is duplicate those faces into their own mesh. Give this new mesh a name like liquid called the old mesh glass. With the liquid object selected, press Shift and H to hide everything else from the scene. Select the top edge loop, extrude it in a couple of times, and then press M and collapse. Do the same thing on the bottom to fill in the faces there. If we turn on face orientation in the overlay options, we can see that our faces are pointing the wrong way around. With everything selected in edit mode, just press Alt and N and choose flip from the normals to correct that problem. For the form on top of the bigger, we're going to follow the exact same process. Just select a few face loops from inside the top of the edge, just above the liquid, duplicate them, separate them into their own object and then fill in the top and the bottom of that mesh. At this point, I decided to quickly get the camera into the rough position that was going to be in for the final render. It really helps if you can get the final camera position locked down as soon as possible. That way you don't have to worry about modeling things that won't even make it into the final render. 
I selected the foam mesh and retopologized it quickly with the voxel remesher. I found that a voxel size of 1mm was good enough, but your mileage may vary depending on the exact geometry you've got and the size of the scene. Just play with the settings until you get some nice bit of geometry going on while retaining the same basic shape. You don't need loads of verts for this. All we're going to do is go into the sculpting panel. I'm going to use a really light brush just to add a few bumps and a little bit of variation to the foam. You don't want to overdo this. I found it looks really, really hacky if you go too over the top. Just a few little bumps will do the trick. So at this point, the bulk of our modeling's done and it's basically completed. We can move on to the materials. People seem to think that realistic materials have to have loads of imperfections. I see all these comments and it's always like, oh, you need fingerprints, you need hair fibers, you need all these micro details, and it's not strictly true. Unless you're creating an extreme close-up macro shot, these details shouldn't be in the render because they wouldn't be in a real photograph. Like, let's take this photo of some badly pulled pints, for instance. You can't see any fingerprints on this image, right? Anyway, let's start with the glass. Go into the shader editor, get rid of the principal shader, and add a glass node. Connect the noise texture node to the roughness input of the shader. Add a texture coordinate node and plug the object data into the vector. Now it's just a case of playing around with the settings on the noise texture until you get a nice looking cold glass effect. You can add a color ramp in between the noise texture and the roughness, and that'll give you control over the density of the condensation. Making the black value less dark will make the whole glass more frosted. And if you change the white value, it'll make the condensation look less visible. For the liquid, add another glass shader, but this time change the IOR to be 1.33. Then just play around with the color until you get something you like. You can see here I have some weird shading going on on this glass. To fix that issue if you get it, just right click on the liquid mesh. Make sure that the origin is set to geometry. Then scale it up slightly until it clips inside the glass mesh. You can get some finer control just by holding down shift while you scale. For the foam, we could set up a particle system and make millions of bubbles, but this is all about achieving realism the easy way, and you can't really make out individual bubbles on most photographs of bigger anywhere I noticed. So what we're going to do is just cheat it with the material. Give it a principal shader and use a slightly off-white colour, and then pick a slightly more saturated shade of cream for the subsurface colour. Give it a low value on the subsurface scattering, lower the roughness a little bit, and give it a transmission value of something like 0.1. In my version, I noticed I got this weird yellow band that was caused by a gap that was in between the foam and the liquid when I remeshed it. I just went into edit mode and I flattened out those bottom faces by scaling them on the z-axis. Finally, to create the bubbly surface, what we're going to do is use a Voronoi texture and plug that into the factor of a bump node, and I think that gave us a pretty good looking head on the bigger. So if we give this a test render, we get something that looks like this. Let's be honest, it looks a little bit like a cold pint of piss, and the reason it looks like that is because it's completely flat, so we're going to add some bubbles. Luckily, bubbles in Blender are ridiculously easy. Just add a circle, scale it down, and position it until it's at the bottom of your liquid mesh. Go into edit mode, select everything with A, and press F to give it a face. This is going to be the emitter for the bubbles, so call this object emitter. For the bubbles, create an icosphere, reduce it down so it's just got one subdivision, right click on it and shade smooth. Then scale it down till it's really, really small. Move that up on the z-axis until it's well out of the way of the camera. You don't want that showing up in the final render. Give the emitter object a particle system. Crank up the number of particles to like 10 or 15,000, something like that. Change the render type to be object and pick the bubble object that we just made, the icosphere. Make sure you uncheck show emitter, otherwise you'll end up with this weird white circle at the bottom of the final render. If we play the animation now, you can see that these bubbles rise up, but then they fall back down again. To fix this, we're just going to go into the failed weight options on the particle system, shut off the gravity, and then we can play with the scale and the scale random values to get loads of realistic looking bubbles. Now if we play the animation though, you can see we've got another problem. The bubbles shoot straight out the top of the bigger. Select the foam mesh, make it a collision object in the physics panel. Then if you select this option for kill particles, what will happen is the bubbles will die as soon as they hit the foam layer, as they should in real life. 
just give the bubbles a basic glass material with an IOR of 1.33, no roughness, change the colour so it's similar to the liquid but maybe a little bit lighter. That's your bubbles done. Now we need to make some condensation droplets around the outside of the glass. Select the glass and select all the face loops going around the sides of the glass by holding down shift and alt while you left click. Leave the very top and the very bottom of the selection out. Just get the faces that are around the side. Duplicate the faces into their own object just like we did with the liquid and the foam before. Call this object droplet emitter. Create a sphere, move it up well above the scene. In wireframe mode, go into side view and delete half the mesh. Then use proportional editing to grab the top of the mesh, turn it into a teardrop shape. Duplicate this figure two or three more times and make some slightly deformed versions. Give these objects a clear glass shader with an IOR of 1.33. Select all the droplets and use Ctrl and G to add them all into a new collection. Call this collection droplets or something like that. Select the droplet emitter, give it a new particle system and change the type to be hair. Under render, change the type to collection and then select that collection that we just made with the droplets in it. If your particles are facing the wrong way like this, you're going to want to flip them 180 degrees on the Z axis. If your particles are miles away from the emitter mesh like this, make sure the origin of each droplet is aligned to the back of the mesh. So your droplets are probably going to look a little bit too uniform at first. To change that, just go over to the emit type and go to face and then change the distribution from jitted to random. To get a bit more randomness into these particles, we can also add a new texture. Set that to clouds and set the type to hard. If you go into the particle system settings, we can go to textures and choose that texture that we just made. Then go back to the texture panel and a new option will appear called influences. If we turn up the value for distribution, Blender will scatter the particles around based on that cloud texture that we just made. So if we give this another render, it looks pretty good now, but those droplets are a little bit too circular for me. For the table, just add a plane, scale it down, and turn on vertex snapping to align it properly with the bottom of the glass. Give it the material of your choice. I just went for this wood plank texture set I downloaded from Texture Haven. Here's a pro tip, if you've got node wrangler enabled, you can control shift and click on the principal shader and that'll allow you to import all your texture maps at once and add on and even set up all the nodes for you. So I added a few loop cuts to the wood and I used control and B to bevel them. Then I extruded those faces down a little bit to add the gaps in between the wood. I selected all the top edges and I gave them a little bit of a bevel of their own just to smooth off the harsh edges. Perfect 90 degree edges are extremely rare in real life and they're a dead giveaway that something CG. I added a hue saturation node and a mix node just to alter the colours slightly of the texture. Now we're in the final stretch, let's add some wet spillage marks onto the table. Create a new image texture in the table material, call that wetness or something like that. Connect it to the material output so you can see what you're doing. If you use a white plain brush, just draw on the marks wherever you want them to appear in the texture pane settings. Plug the wetness image into the clear coat factor of the principal shader. Combine that with a roughness map using a mix RGB node too. You'll probably have to flip the colour of the wetness map before you put it into the mix RGB, just use an invert node for that. Finally, make another mix RGB node but set this one to overlay and plug the wetness map into the factor. Plug your diffuse colour into the top slot and make the bottom slot a darker shade of brown. What that'll do is it'll make the painted areas of your wood look wet and they'll also be darker like they would be on a wet wood surface. Once you've got those nodes set up you can even go back into the texture paint and you can paint on all the wet areas in real time and see exactly what they're going to look like. Just remember to save out your wetness map as the image texture before you close Blender Otherwise that's going to disappear when you next open up the file. Ok, so let's render out this bad boy. Under the colour management tab, change the look to medium high contrast and bump up the sample count to as high as you dare. I went for a thousand, I think for this was enough. You're probably going to need quite a few samples though. If you're using 2.83, you can enable adaptive samples to cut down on the render times. Add some sort of empty object to the scene and line it up with the top of the glass. This is going to be our focal point. 
Now if we select the camera, we can go into the camera settings and enable depth of field, and then we can target the depth of field onto the empty. If you lower the f-stop number, you'll get more blur into the background. I went for 5.5 f-stop on this. You're going to have to probably play around with the settings until you get something that looks good, depending on the scale and various other factors. And finally, since we're rendering out loads of different glass shaders, we're going to want to crank up the number of light bounces for glossy, transmission and transparency. Make sure you enable the option for denoising data in the Render Pass tab, and then we can go straight into the compositor and we can set up our denoiser ahead of time. Just add a denoising node, and then connect up the noisy image, normal and albedo passes into the correspondent inputs on the node. Connect the node to the output. The raw render will probably look something like this. It's pretty good, but we can add some extra touches to this in the compositor. We can increase the realism of this scene just by adding in some chromatic aberration with the lens distortion node. Chromatic aberrations, those little weird bands of colour you sometimes see on photographs when they're out of focus slightly. If you bump up the dispersion value, it will make your scene look more realistic, but be very, very sparing with this. Even a value of 0.1 was far too much. I think I went for a value of 0 0.02 in the end, which was subtle, but it does just add that little bit of extra realism and makes it look like a real camera. Finally, just add in an RGB curve node into the scene and tweak the contrast until you get something you're happy with. Then connect up all your nodes as they should be connected and you should have yourself a pretty fine looking render of a glass of bigger. If you're a member of my Patreon, you can get access to the same files for this tutorial as usual. If you're not a member of my Patreon, um, well, you're shit out of luck. Go and sign up. Sorry. Hit like and subscribe if you found the video helpful. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you for the next one, guys.